on February 22nd, the Italian ambassador to the Democratic Republic of Congo was killed in route from Goma, the capital city of the province of North Kivu, going to Ruchuru. News reports and also the governor's um, uh, statement informs us that the, the ambassador was part of a convoy of seven people in the vehicle of the World Food Program and that they were kidnapped. And then the park rangers with the National Army attempted to rescue them. Unfortunately, they lost the three of them because those who kidnapped them uh, killed the ambassador, the bodyguard, and the driver. But we want to understand what is going on in that region that needs special and urgent attention. To discuss this problem, I invited Emmanuel Sekioba. He is a native of Congo and also uh, North Kivu is, is his home. Emmanuel, welcome. Thank you. Please quickly tell me what did you feel when you heard that uh, His Excellency <clears throat> Luca Athanasius, the ambassador of Italy to the Democratic Republic of Congo, and two other people were killed going to your hometown. What was your feeling? Uh, my, my feeling is uh, uh, the sadness, the sorrow. And let me use this time really to present the condolences to the ambassador's family, to the great Republic of Italy, and to those Congolese who, who passed with him during this uh, uh, attack. We know that uh, the pain, the anguish that their families are going through is shared by many families in Eastern Congo who constantly have to face these, uh, uh, these uh, armed groups every single day. Can you tell us what is the root cause of such insecurity? Um, thank you very much. To answer your question, um, short, uh, just using short uh, phrases or short time, is that um, the root causes of the instability in that region is uh, uh, maybe related to the uh, geopolitical changes that happened 25 years ago. You have to recall that the region was populated by the same people since the independence of Congo. They never had any trouble. They never had any problem, but since 1996, with the change of uh, the Thousand Hills country, uh, uh, the instability came into Congo. Because if you read all the documentation available now, after the change of regime in, uh, let's say, Rwanda, refugees came into Congo, bringing with them some other problems. And today we are living the nightmare for now more than 25 years in security because of the negligence from the international organization. Yes, so the negligence from the uh, international community, but Congo is home to the largest UN deployment ever. What happened? Did they deliver or not? Thank you. Uh, I believe that uh, you ask a very, very profound question, especially with the, uh, the United Nations uh, mission in Congo. 20,000 troops, as I heard. But guess what? People are being kidnapped. That life of insecurity has been the common life of Congolese. I don't, I can't, my assessment toward the United Nations is really a failure. They have never been able to go and bring peace and security to those poor people who are living together since the creation of the nations until the 
destabilization of the region by the change of regime in a uh, thousand hills country yes you said that the international community has neglected uh, the issue of peace in the democratic republic of congo but what are the, the are they blamed to be shared um, by the Congolese authorities? Yes. You know, it's our country. And not only Congolese authorities, but people like me who come from there. But most of the time we have a voice that is not heard by anyone. The Congo has been victim of uh, these aggressions and uh, the negligence of the international community having already 20,000 troops in the Congo is just a sign that they have been for different missions than mission of bringing peace in Congo. And Congolese because of poverty and political, geopolitical, that is so complicated that I will not explain it here in this short uh, 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 discussion I have. Because of the, 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 the geopolitics, the uh, lack of uh, economic development, the insecurity will continue. People are hungry. People uh, will be recruited by the militias group anytime. Yes, the proliferation of militias is, uh, ha has worsened, but it is the role of the Congolese state to ensure the integrity of its borders and the security of its people. How are you assigning the blame to the international community when indeed Congo is a sovereign country? Uh, the sovereignty of a country is a, a very, very nice slogan, but uh, when you are not powerful to secure your borders, I think you have the right to ask for help, right? And that ask for help doesn't have to come only from the government. It has to come from people like me, like anybody who's Congolese, who has been pleading. Myself, I've been writing, calling to the attention of people getting killed. Reports are there. The United Nations has uh, the mapping report that shows more than 6 million people killed in that region. And guess what? 20,000 troops of the United Nations have been unable to bring peace there. Do you think that's not enough? information for the international community to say that they have to change the gear and find a way of helping those people live in the region live peacefully. They know that there is a solution and it can help. It has been established by evidence, even when you look at arrests in the city of Goma, that Congolese citizens are armed and they are responsible for the you know, the kidnappings for ransom business that has been now exacerbated, which is, in my opinion, what uh, uh, Ambassador uh, um, Lucas Atanasio is victim of. Now, the question is, what should, what should be done? What should the Congolese government do? What should the international community do to assist in bringing about peace, because I know many, many families have been victim of these armed groups the same way Ambassador Atanasio has. I, I understand your point, uh, uh, my friend. Okay, the 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 armed groups or armed bandits who are circulating everywhere, causing damage to our communities. It should be looked at not as a cause of those difficulties we have, it's a consequence of the past. When people have been left of 25 years under deprivation, under uh, seeing the resource, resource being depleted, looted, under uh, 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 absence of education, misery and so on, people will do whatever they want to do to survive. And especially the father have been having access to weapon, to firearms, that will causes all of this trouble. Remember, I can give you the statistics. If you want 
give me some chance. I will tell you in the next uh, next uh, next discussion we're going to have that all my young ages, all the way to the uh, to the 1996, I never heard about armed robberies in Goma or in villages. All of this began with the invasion that came from uh, the Thousand Hills. And now how to fix it? Congolese, we have to work with our brothers and sisters because they're the one now carrying the weapon, killing ourselves, our families. But also we have to ask those who are the cause roots to try to adjust their policies. So the, the international media and national media have um, been uh, documenting and rec uh, commenting on the tragedy that uh, took Ambassador uh, Athana Athanasius. But very little is known about those who died today, who were kidnapped today and yesterday. The insecurity continues. You as a leader in the community in Eastern Congo, what would you want to see happen? Okay, um, what I want to see happening is the security. I want, to, want peace to uh, be uh, our way of living, but how do we reach up there? Let, let's use this forum to call on international community for help. The problem is real, the insecurity is real, and the government by itself is unable to go ahead and solve it. And it does, it's not, there's no shame to go ahead and ask for help, right? And that's what I think. The international community sowing what happened now to one of the high profile figures in Congo should step in and say, you know what, it's about time to help. The next thing is ourselves, Congolese. Let's be honest. We can't continue to, to, to criticize our government. We can't continue to say bad things about our government without bringing up the solutions. We need all of us, anybody, Congolese, rather than stepping somewhere because we have access to big stage and start talking negative about the current president or the current government. Let's try to bring up solutions to the table inside our own country. Outside we come after we show them that we're serious about bringing up peace. It comes with the development, the access to education and uh, the uh, promotion of uh, good life for everybody. Thank you, Mr. Emmanuel. It has been established that um, the issue of uh, insecurity in um, the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo is very complex. Yes, the war in um, 1996, which was an invasion by Congo's neighbors in the East, is in part responsible for the uh, the beginning of armed criminality, but also it has been documented that weapons used by armed groups have been uh, sold to them by the Congolese army. Additionally, we see that young people who have nothing to do have seen uh, banditism as a lucrative activity to gain money without working. All these issues are complex and they need a swift uh, solution. The leadership of uh, the current president has promised um, uh, uh, to, to bring about peace, but the people are still waiting. Ambassador Lucas and the two other uh, young men died. How many more? Co let us continue the conversation. And thank you for listening. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you.